All right, I got another unboxing plus for you guys. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the new Odyssey from RLG Watches. In this video, I will be unboxing the watch and giving you my first impressions. Okay, so I think I'm getting a little bit of a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms vibe from this. I'll size it up and see how it wears on my seven and a half inch wrist. I'll take it out and test it for a couple days. And come back at the end and give you guys my final conclusions. Okay, so I've had a few days to check out the new um, Odyssey from Richard Legrand. And, you know, when I saw the pictures originally, I thought this was going to be very similar to their previous releases. And even when I was unboxing it, it still bore very strong resemblance. But when I finally got it out and started wearing it, and particularly when I got it outdoors, um, I really began to appreciate all of the different little changes that they made, all of the refinements and evolutions to the design, and what they've come up with, I think, is a really gorgeous uh, edition of this watch. Now, I took a look at Richard Legrand's Ocean Fair watch last summer, and mo the Ocean Fair and Odyssey line have been Richard Legrand's you know main line of watches since their start. And the overall design and aesthetic has remained fairly similar, but kind of continually evolves and refines and shifts and changes. So I'll be curious to see how this one compares to the uh, the Ocean Fair, which looked a lot more angular and you know with a flat link bracelet, a little bit more modern. This one's definitely going back for a more vintage look, but the overall aesthetics of the watch and the dial design still remains very similar between the two. Currently, the Odyssey is available for pre-order on RLG's website. You can pick it up at the pre-order price of $379. It will be shipping in mid-April. Later on, the retail price will jump up to $430. Anyways, let's open it up and take a look at it. Now, RLG did give me this watch for free for review purposes. That's why you're seeing the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. However, other than the watch itself, I did not receive any compensation at all for this review. And RLG did not have any input into the content of this review. Okay, so I think I'm getting a little bit of a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms vibe from this. That curved sapphire bezel is really cool, though. Yeah, so... First impressions, um, really kind of cool vintage vibes coming from this. Um, that kind of jet black dial, really glossy. Uh, you can see that sapphire crystal is picking up a lot of reflections in the studio lighting. Um, it looks like the dial's got a little bit of a sunburst there. Lots of interesting finishing going on with the bracelet with that kind of polished edge on the outside, brushed in the middle. And the finishing on the watch itself also is looking pretty good. Very detailed brushing across the side. Nice polished edges on the lugs. Really clean dial with the 12, 3, 6, and 9. All applied indexes. No date on this one. And the bezel has pretty aggressive knurling there. Um, yeah, it feels very easy to get a hold of. And the bezel action is fairly light. It doesn't take a lot of effort to turn. Very easy to turn. Pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got really defined clicks. Maybe a little bit more springy than some of the other ones than the previous one, uh, but definitely you can feel each click very well. Yeah, and it looks like the bezel is lining up pretty much spot on. But definitely with the curves on that curved sapphire crystal and that curved sapphire bezel really picks up a lot of kind of cool reflections. Let's see drilled end links in there. It's a new clasp as well. Really nicely finished. Again, matching the polishing on the bracelet, getting a brushed clasp with the kind of the laser engraving of their new logo. Uh, dual push button, really smooth, nice solid looking clasp. Looks like they're giving you three micro adjusts on there. Now, a real satisfying operation on the clasp too. And this is coming in at that new 39 millimeter size, so they've reduced a little bit. Let's let's check that and yeah, check all the dimensions. So going across the top of the bezel, I'm getting right at 39 millimeters. 
height, including that dome crystal, is right about 12 and a half millimeters, so pretty slim for a 200 meter diver. I'm getting 46 millimeters lug to lug, so that's gonna wear pretty well on even smaller wrists. Yeah, and you're getting 20 millimeter lug widths. So a lot of strap options for this, including the one that they gave you. Um, let's go ahead and check out the other contents of this box really quick. So give me a Tropic rubber strap. Um, nice branding on the hardware. You can see it's signed there. Kind of cool little angular look. Um, feels a little bit thin, but not bad. Uh, it's, it's not silicone, so it's a higher quality rubber. Um, should wear pretty well. We will test the watch on this in a little bit here. And then they're giving you some other goodies in here. This is something that you don't see every day. Um, they're including a hammer you can assemble like this. So you have a hammer, a spring bar tool, and then a pin pusher. And so you can use the hammer and the pin pusher to size the bracelet, which is actually a really great little add-on. So for people who are, you know, getting maybe their first watch and they don't have the tools to size the bracelet, this one is actually going to give you that so that you can size the bracelet on your own. Um, I also have this little block that makes it easier to put this in for pounding the pins out. Um, I got that at like the dollar store here in Japan. If you got one of those, it makes it a little bit easier, but you can kind of figure out a way to get around, I think, without it. And in a second here, I'll be sizing this bracelet up and seeing how it wears. Uh, last, they are giving you this little kind of leatherette watch roll, and it feels actually much nicer than the last one. The stitching looks more substantial. The material feels a little bit thicker, a little bit more like real leather. I kind of still think this is artificial leather, but it feels really nice actually this time. Maybe a little bit thicker, better grade polyurethane leather. Um, so this is the kind of thing that's it's nice to keep the watch in if you need to carry it around, keep two watches in it. Actually looks pretty cool. Anyway, so let's go ahead and size this guy up and see how it wears on my seven and a half inch wrist. Okay, so here it is sized for my seven and a half inch wrist. I wound up having to take out three links, and as you noticed in the changing, this does use the pin and collar system, so be careful when you are changing the bracelet. Um, there is a small metal tube inside the links. You need both that tube and the pin in order to replace the link and get it tighter in. Um, another thing I noticed is that there didn't seem to be any arrows on the back of the links as often as the case, you know, indicating which way you have to push it. So I'm assuming it doesn't really matter. I guess you can push the pins out either way. But you can see it there. Um, this is a smaller watch than I usually wear for a dive watch. You know, with dive watches, I typically prefer, you know, between 40, 42. Uh, so 39 is a little bit smaller, but I think I could totally get away with it. Uh, and I think a lot of people are kind of starting to lean towards these smaller watches. It does look really great on the wrist. Yeah, I really love the light play that you're getting with this. And the finishing is pretty impressive for a watch in this price range. So let's go ahead and kill the lights and take a quick look at the loom before I start testing this. And one of the things that they said that they upgraded was the loom going to a brighter C3 formulation. I think the last one was BGW9. And it does look pretty bright have not yet hit it with a black light so let's do that now and charge this guy up and see how it looks okay so that is a nice bright strong green glow you are getting a fully loom bezel so you get that round loom pip at 12 o'clock and then minute markings at 15 30 45 so that's nice you can see the Arabic numerals at 12, 3, 6, and 9. They are applied and fully loomed. So really good after dark performance. So it looks like they've done a pretty good job with the loom on the new Odyssey here. Okay, so with all that said, let's go ahead and test this guy out for a couple days and see how it wears.
Okay, so as soon as I took this watch outside, it really came alive. I mean, it looked cool when I was unboxing it, but as soon as I got it out into the sunlight and into daylight, you really notice all of the cool little details that they have in it. Um, the polished edges on the side of the case, the polished accents on the bracelet, and especially that curved sapphire bezel uh, combined with the dome sapphire crystal. A really cool look. And then also just the handset and the markers. You know, you, you don't really appreciate it uh, until you get out in the sun, but they are really highly polished on the, the edges of that. And when they catch the light, it just really lights up. It, it really um, shines and glows. It's very easy to see, and it just looks really cool. Another thing that you notice is the dial itself. So this is kind of a, a glossy black dial with a sunray finish on it. It is not a boring black at all. You know, a lot of black dials can be a little bit boring and they do different things to um, sort of spruce them up with textures and things. This is kind of a simple uh, effect, but it's really classy looking. So really cool to see a different side of this watch once you get it outdoors versus indoors. All right, one thing I thought you guys might be interested in is to take a quick look at the differences between the previous version, the Ocean Fair, and the newest Odyssey, which is the one we're checking out now. So the Ocean Fair was released last summer. You can see the dial designs are very similar between the two. But other than the dial design, I think you can see a lot of differences. Uh, the Ocean Fair feels a lot more angular and a, with a lot more flat surfaces on it. That's definitely true for the bezel. It's a flat sapphire bezel and especially the bracelet as well with this kind of really unique flat link bracelet. The case design is also very blocky and angular. Um, kind of looks a little bit chunky and, and oddly enough, these are both the same thickness. They're both 13 millimeters thick, but the new Odyssey, it appears much thinner just because of the case design. It's got a much thinner mid case with some different layers and steps to it. Uh, you'll also notice that everything is a lot softer and rounder uh, on the finishing and again, especially on the bezel. So in this case, you're getting a curved sapphire bezel, which really gives the watch a different feel. And the bracelet is totally different as well. Uh, this is kind of a more vintage style bracelet with some interesting polishing on the outer edges of the uh, links there. So kind of, yeah, I like what they've done here. Um, one other big change is on the clasp. We've gone with a totally different clasp here. I've seen, you know, both of these clasps are fairly common across a number of different microband watches, you know, and I like both of them. I really like the older one in that it had a lot of micro adjusts, whereas this new one only has three. So kind of would have nice, been nice to see more micro adjusts, but this is a very nice clasp, very easy to use, very well built. Um, the other thing is that on the newer one, they've gone with a new logo with this RLG logo on the clasp and then also on the face of the watch too. You can see right under the 12 o'clock, whereas before they were kind of still going with the RL Richard Legrand logo on the older one. So that gives you kind of a quick look at the differences between these two watches. Now, one of the changes that RLG did was that they went from the blue BGW9 over to the green glowing C3 Swiss Superluminova. C3 is supposed to be a little bit brighter and that's one of the things that they touted with this edition. And while I don't have time to do a full loom breakdown, I figured I'd give it in a quick head-to-head -head with the Seiko Samurai for comparison purposes and see how it fares. And it held up pretty well. After one hour, the hands are actually beating out the Samurai just barely, um, but the markers are lagging behind a little bit. Now RLG did go with some fairly thin markers and uh, numerals as well as hands. So there's not as much space to add loom as there is on the Samurai and some other dive watches that really focus on legibility and loom over everything else. But even still, the brightness is very good and again, pretty comparable to the Seiko Samurai, which gives it some really excellent after dark legibility. Okay, so I've had a few days with the Richard Legrand Odyssey, the new one. And you know, at first I thought it was gonna be very similar to their previous releases, but after having it in hand, there's just so many small changes and small improvements that really add up um, to create a really unique, really gorgeous looking piece. The previous versions have all been great, but they keep getting better, and I think that's what this one is. This is an even better version of an already great watch. I mean, I think we've touched on a lot of what these enhancements are, the polishing, the accents, the curved bezel, the, cur the domed sapphire crystal, um, that really deep, beautiful sunray dial. Each one of these elements really adds to the complete package. 
And right now, RLG is putting out a watch that has a level of polish and finish to it uh, that really uh, sets it apart from a lot of other micro brands out there. So if you're in the market for a dive watch or just a great all around everyday watch, I think this is a, a strong one to consider. The build quality is top notch. I love the movement that they've used inside that Miyota 9000 series movement with the, the smooth sweeping second hand um, is probably my favorite budget watch movement right now. In this package, I never noticed the uh, the rotor spin that sometimes is, is noticeable on Miyota 9000 series movement, so that wasn't an issue for me. And that smooth sweeping second hand and the high accuracy that it brings and the slimness in particular that allows this watch also to wear really well on the wrist, um, I think all are just really fantastic features uh, in a watch in this price range. There was one minor quality control issue, and that was that on the bracelet, there were a couple of spots that appeared to have some very small light kind of scuffs on them. And I'm not sure exactly what causes that or if it's something that can be cleaned or, or rubbed off, uh, but it was a little bit unfortunate to see that on a brand new watch to see those marks. I would have liked to see the bracelet in complete pristine condition. So that would be one thing to keep an eye out for if you order this watch, check and see if that happens on yours. But that was really the only negative I had with this watch. If you're considering purchasing this watch, I think there's only two things that you need to kind of think about. Um, one is the size. So this is a 39 millimeter watch uh, going down on the smaller side. So if you are looking for a watch that is on the larger side with a lot of wrist presence, um, if you're not used to wearing slightly smaller sized watches, um, this might feel undersized to some people with larger wrists. And I'm really starting to like this smaller size. Uh, it did take me a while to get used to but it's extremely comfortable and it's just a yeah, very, very classic looking size on the wrist. I don't feel like it looks too small. I have a seven and a half inch wrist, 39 millimeters for me was just fine, but that's something to keep in mind. The other thing is that this is a no date watch and they're not offering any date versions. Uh, for me, that's always a bit of a bummer. I, I prefer to have a date on a watch if it's going to be my main everyday watch simply because I can't remember what the date is. And I wear watches not just for style, but for function. And for me in a daily watch, having a date is a big deal. But I definitely see the appeal of a no date watch. I do think it looks better without the date. And most people are already gonna know whether they fall into one of these two camps. All in all, I think this is a great watch. Highly recommended you guys check it out if you're interested in dive watch and you like kind of this more classic uh, look to it. Again, I feel like this one is taking a lot of inspiration from the 50 Fathoms, which is a whole different beast from the um, brand of dive watch that draws more inspiration from the likes of Rolex or Tudor. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this review. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.